were silent right throughout the proceedings. These proceedings are streamed live on YouTube, Facebook and Twitter of the recent provincial legislature and the office of the Premier and 22 Eastern Cape Community uh, radio stations, as well as in Flora Romano FM, to accommodate those who could not be accommodated within the precinct today. Furthermore, these proceedings are broadcast live on Pumakata TV, as well as EMCA. And the members, just to note, that the Sergeant at Arms will just deal and, and note those who are not dressed in accordance with Rule 79.1 and they will then be handed over to the Ethics Committee. At, at this particular point, we need to acknowledge our guests. We have a huge variety of guests that is here. The Premier will acknowledge those specific that have come as per the invitation of the uh, Speaker of the Eastern Cape Provincial Legislature and also by invitation of the Premier of the Eastern Cape uh, Government. Our kings and queens that have addressed us here, you are most welcome. The Provincial Commissioner that is with us, members of the Provincial Legislature that is here with us, the leaders representing the coin uh, and the sun, contra lesser and the traditional leaders, um, our judiciary that is led by Judge Dorsho, welcome our ministers and deputy ministers, the National Chief Whip, welcome back. Honorable Fabian Matodina, a special welcome to you. Uh, we, I think everybody still misses you in the, in the house here. The consulates that is uh, with us, you can just uh, raise your hands, everybody can see. Uh, the, the consulates that is sitting with us, I can see that they, that they are there with us. Um, also, the trikas of the metros and the district municipalities, if you can raise your hands, the mayors, deputy mayors, speakers, all local municipalities, the mayors that is, that is here with us, the chapter 9 and 10 institutions and SAGA that is with us, our broad legislature stakeholders um, that we have invited, and those are from the sporting fraternity, from the specific schools that we, that we have invited, our child ambassadors, those that have entered... Um, conversations and dialogues dealing with issues that is affecting uh, young girls and also the young men's uh, parliament that we've had. Our radio and pre sober publicity women seated at the gallery. Where are you seated? Can you put up your hand so that we just see you? Those that have phoned in um, and, and answered some questions and won them a seat here yes, the first time. Welcome to the, to the legislature. And they are telling me that they did their homework before calling in. Oh, there they are sitting here. Yes, thank you. Can you give them a round of applause? Yes. As well as we have learners from Ebenezer Majomzi, Majombozi, yes. As well as JS Kejana, the school, where is the principal and the learners? I'm not quite sure they should be sitting that side. Yes, can we also give them a, a, a round of applause? Uh, yes, welcome. Uh, we are, indeed, we are uh, pleased that you have uh, decided to join us today and we hope that you will enjoy this very, very important uh, uh, tabling by our Honorable Premier for the uh, State of the Province Address. It is always uh, an important event on the calendar of the Legislature that um, this Legislature can invite the Premier to come to the Legislature and table the state of the province of Greece, giving us direction where government is going and then we as the legislature have the onerous responsibility to make sure that we then oversight vigorously those uh, commitments um, that is made in the state of the province of Greece. Let me first allow the uh, Secretary to make a few announcements and I hope everybody has settled down uh, uh, and we are all ready for this but I think just a few house proceedings and a few issues that Secretary needs to uh, table. Thank you. Over to you Secretary. Guests are required to remain in their seats for the duration of the address by the Premier and where there is a need to move out this must be done with no disturbance. Number two, all cell phones must be switched off or put on silent for the duration of the address. We also plead with our guests to refrain from using the camera flash when taking, books, when taking videos or pictures inside the house. Uh, 
dormitories or operation facilities for guests um, are, are situated in the gallery. There, are, there is the men's one on my right and also the ladies one on my left. And provision has been made uh, in terms of water provision. As I announced earlier on that we have a challenge with water, but these ones can be can be utilized um, by those that are not able to reach the provision of operation facilities that has been made right at the back um, in the parking area. There are operation facilities that have been um, mobile terrace that have been um, situated there for everybody. At the end of the, the I must also mention that we do have our protocol staff that will also assist and, and guide people to the to the facilities. At the end of the address, guests are requested to remain seated until the procession of the speaker and the premier has left the chamber and until protocol and security staff indicate that the doors are open. We also have emergency exits that are behind the honorable speaker, uh, the, also the main entrance to the chamber, and also on the public that are on my left and on my right, there are exit doors, and should there be a need to evacuate in case of an emergency, there are evacuation marshals that are situated just outside that will assist people uh, as they exit. Thank you. Thank, thank you, Secretary. I just made a, um, a few omissions, and I would like to correct that. The um, First Lady is also in the house. How can we forget that? Mrs. Mabiane is with us. Uh, I'm sure also here today to celebrate the birthday of the Honorable Premier. I'm sure we will have a whole day celebration today. We can give a clap to Honorable Members. I think we will speak to Mrs. Mabiane what the Premier said yesterday in the dry run. How many seats must be accommodated? That was it. As well as the Provincial Secretary of the African National Congress, um, Comrade uh, Luka Yetobi is also with us. Welcome, Comrade uh, Nobala. Uh, you are also welcome. Then from our partnership and our sponsors that we are having here, we are having Old Mutual, we are having um, FNB as well as uh, MTN that have sponsored uh, a lot of the things uh, for this um, state of the province address. Uh, so we also acknowledge your sponsorships uh, 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 in that regard and welcome for your representatives that is here uh, today. Now I think I have uh, included everybody that I have left out. I will now ask the Secretary to read the order of the day and members to uh, just to understand that we only have the one order of today. Over to you, Secretary. Addressed by the Premier of the province. I now call upon the Honourable Premier to address the House, Honourable Oscar Mabuyani. members of the National Assembly that are here with uh, ministers and deputy ministers, the executive mayor of uh, Buffalo City and with all other mayors that are joining us today, traditional and uh, religious leadership, uh, we've got our queens, kings and the leaders uh, from our uh, house of traditional leadership. The members of the diplomatic and the consular corps, the director general and the HODs, CEOs from our public entities, chapter nine institutions, distinguished guests. In that uh, category, there is also Mrs. Mamuyane, as it was said, as a distinguished guest. 
Ladies and gentlemen, uh, fellow citizens of our province, so good morning. We come before this assembly to share with the people of our province a story of good progress on the work we are doing in the seven priorities of the sixth administration. In these priorities, our focus is on creating uh, job opportunities uh, for our people and then making it a point that we deal with issues of education, health, the basic services, the challenge of roads and electricity that we are currently uh, experiencing in our country. The year 2022 was an eventful year. We had uh, times of hardship but also moments of uh, wonder that brought great joy in our hearts because they were an affirmation that our efforts of building the Eastern Cape will want on track. Among key highlights of 2022 was the achievement of 77.3% matric pass rate. This is an achievement, an improvement of 4% from the class of 2021. With our sustained investment in education, we are in our province towards the achievement of the term target of above 80 percent as we committed to when we started in 2019. This is a of good progress. On the sporting front, uh, in 2022, Banyana Banyana won the Women's Africa um, Cup of Nations, beating Morocco in their own backyard. In that conquering uh, Banyana Banyana team, there were six young women from our province, Melinda Khadiet, Kolosa, Biana, Sibulele, Olweni, Bambani, Bambanani, Mbane, Kaylin Swartz, and Robin Mudley. Ngozi Makobogazana, Kobasi Ayaz, Ama Kobogazana, Anga Angalala and the Lady Slowyaz Ba, Uyende Legile. Siabula Laga for putting the name of our province on the national and continental map. You are an inspiration to many young girls who want to take up sport as a career. We also wish Akona Makalima all the best as she will be flying the South African flag high as a referee at the 2023 FIFA Women's World Cup. She will be the only South African. She will be the only South African officiating at this World Cup from Namakwe to the world. From Namako to the wild, Sitike Amba, Unge Mi, Magam. We started 2023 with a bang as the Sunrisers, Eastern Cape uh, Cricket Franchise, won the inaugural SA T20 Championship two weeks ago. This beautiful trophy, which we should be able to see uh, very soon around us, is indeed an affirmation of the good work that is done by sons and daughters of our province. In the public gallery today, we are joined by the coach, Adrian Beryl, and the executive management of the team, represented by Vice President, Ms. Silva, and General Manager, Ms. Srinath. We take our heads off to all of you as a collective in that team. And the you have made us as a province very proud, I must indicate that, and solidified the position of the province as indeed the home of legends. Honourable Speaker and Honourable Members, uh, fellow, fellow citizens, we are also had moments that dampened our spirits in 2022. 
The saddest of them all was the tragedy that struck in our province when 21 young people lost their lives at Enyobeni Tavern in Sinari Park. We commend the people of our province for the overwhelming support you have offered to the families who lost their children in that uh, tragic uh, incident. We display our unbreakable spirit of Ubuntu. We hope never to see a repeat of such incident anywhere in our province. The effects of the climate change also impacted negatively on our people with the natural disasters pounding on our province. This led to loss of lives, destruction of homes, and the reversal of, uh, of our progress on the infrastructure development. to be specific. Criminality in all shapes and forms inflicted a, a vicious assault on our democracy, leaving in its wake our people without a sense of feeling safe and secure in their homes and communities. Witness heinous crimes of mass shooting and killings in some parts of our province. Sitenga Nabantu Basa New Bright, Sitenga Nabantu Basa Tanzeka Paya Epi, Yin M Tata, Nabantu, Bezni Dao, Es Fanalon Kageswedi, E Oko Tubini, E Jalunta, Indao Es Teko, Roses, Bonazi Passport, Nezelelo, E Lezike Benga, Neskilam Kuba, Ubum, who takes up on Baban Babut. Despite these setbacks, we consider 2022 as a year of tremendous progress towards the fulfillment of 2019 electoral mandate. Our story of good progress begins on the economy because it is the key piece in the puzzle of poverty, unemployment, inequality, and that we are trying to solve. The provincial economy is on a path to recovery after the devastating period of COVID-19 in 2020 and 2021. We recorded growth in the Eastern Cape gross domestic product in the three quarters of 2022. Thank you. As a result, the number of, of employed persons in our province increased by 144,000 between the quarter three of 2021 and quarter three of 2022. This is a story of good progress. The, additional, the addition of 144,000 in our economy is a positive trajectory we want to maintain because there are still far too many citizens of our province who remain unemployed. Every day, our minds are preoccupied by unlocking more opportunities for economic growth so that a woman, a man, a young person who needs a job can get one. Today, I want to assure the people of our province that more jobs are coming. We say so because in 2022, we made history by attracting 11 new investors at our provincial investment conference with a combined value of 46 billion rands. This a ShopRite group chairs our pictures, Transnet, Port of Ngoha, Pentela, Sun Farming, South African Breweries, Mklobiso Concrete, Toyota Material Handling, Sanaha Properties Development, Sandral, and Agora Lithium Petri. This was the biggest investment value ever attracted to the province economy in one year under the democratic dispensation. Of these newly announced investments, projects worth 1.3 billion are underway with 1.1,908 1 jobs uh, having been created. Some of the 11th investors are in the public gallery today. 
Wenzel was having at the state and Jay into the Mkana eight. Balap Ababan State Tangabo, Abaze, Kudneta, El Pondo, Sba Memilian and Sanj. Join me, honorable members, in acknowledging their contribution to our provincial economy with indeed a solid round of applause. <laughs> Where these investments are located, our people have jobs. That's a fact. They earn salaries and can put food on the table for their families. That's very important for us. Last week I visited South African breweries, Ibai Brewery, where they are investing 510 million for plant expansion that will lead to more jobs. The office that matters most because we must change people's lives. We cannot be preoccupied with paper shifting. We should be all out to ensure that we lure more investors uh, to our shores. The new investment we received in 2022 take the cumulative total of the sixth administration to 171 billion. As a result of these investments, 21,664 people in our province are now employed in various sectors of our economy. This is a story of good progress made possible by decisive action we have taken to change the economic trajectory of our province. To sustain the momentum on economic growth and job creation, we need more investors to locate in our province. We therefore aimed to use economic diplomacy as an instrument to attract more foreign investors. That's why today we've got so number of consul general that are here uh, the diplomatic corps that is here from different countries in the world. The European support, the American support, Asian support, there are uh, such uh, ambassadors here. I can talk about Ambassador of Singapore. I met them when I went to the State of the Nation address, about 10 of them under one roof, because we must begin to talk sense to the international economy. Ours as South Africans is peace in the world. We are advocating peace. We are calling for the respect of sovereignty of our countries. That is going to be important for us to make sure that we are working together to move forward. It is our belief that through pursuing international partnership, we would be able to attract more foreign direct investors that will create jobs for our people. An ambassador from Singapore said he has never been in Eastern Cape. Uh, he wanted to come here and we said uh, tourism board make sure that this ambassador when he lands here yesterday you move him around show him Tanzania. so ambassador surely had some awesome experience for being in our province over the last 24 hours of course all other ambassadors have been here coming in and out the council uh, generals so we're working uh, very hard to make sure that we are able to harness that space in the next few weeks I will be leading a team to meet the Secretary General of African Continental Free Trade Area, Mr. Wanelemen, Ogwangwala Pe Eastern Cape, APA, Emakana, Upaya E Accra, we had offices, E Ghana. I will be meeting him there. The purpose of our visit is to engage the Secretary General of, on opportunities that we could exploit in the continent. We will also use that visit uh, to visit Tunisia and Egypt to conclude agreements that will facilitate more investment to the provincial economy, particularly in the rural districts, to give our people a better life that we have promised them about. <laughs> to scale up uh, the work we are doing, uh, we have established an Eastern Cape Economic Development Fund, which will recapitalize uh, uh, which will be recapitalized with our private partners to unlock more future investments. Honorable Speaker, even in the toughest economic times, there are sectors that keep the provincial economy going, that keep employing new people and retaining existing jobs. The auto sector does that exceptionally well. We acknowledge the contribution of our OEMs and component suppliers that are actually resident in our province for the role they play in the livelihood of our people. 
we want to organize ourselves as a province as an auto hub, national auto hub, any company in the world that think of uh, coming in South Africa and invest in that space, that company must not think twice, must know cars are done in Eastern Cape, full stop. So op opening up that and making it a point that we're creating a conducive environment for such, I know there are discussions already with another potential European company that is likely uh, to come at this site in terms of South Africa. We want to make sure that that company goes there because we are consolidating this province as an auto hub, as we are also doing to look at how we consolidate our province as a pharmaceutical hub, building on what currently is done by Aspen uh, in Kabecha as well. In my recent engagement with the captains of the auto sector, I assured them that in the Eastern Cape, we embrace the transition towards production and consumption of electric vehicles. Many people think we have a choice on this matter. We don't. That uh, is here and it is inevitable. We must modernize our production system speedily because the European Union Parliament passed a resolution to ban the sale and purchase of diesel and petrol vehicles in the market by, 20, by 2035. That resolution has consequences for us because the EU is the biggest market for automotive products. I know Phosphor in South Africa has got some good discussions as well on the new generations that are coming, but that must be done between now and 2035. We've got to make sure that we really actually uh, comply with actually uh, international standards. I've tasked the Automotive Industry Development Center, Eastern Cape, to work with the private sector to implement projects that will actually uh, prepare us to be ready for that particular moment, the transition to the electric vehicles. Key among these projects is installation of the public electric vehicle charging station in all key routes enhancement of electric vehicle scales and promotion of renewable energy projects to sustain demands of the auto sector. And these are projects uh, for the future in our province. That's why we talk about your Agora and others on lithium investment. These are companies that are coming up to look at spaces to open up factories in our SZ. We are paying a particular attention to component suppliers in the sector because they are as important as car manufacturing companies. We are aware that many component suppliers have financial challenges which makes it difficult for them to service their contracts. We will collaborate with the private sector to establish a component supplier development fund to expand access to finance. That's a serious transformation intervention. One area that has been bothering me when it comes to the auto sector is the one of panel beaters and mechanics, which is a thriving business in townships. Many panel beaters and mechanics in our townships are missing out on the lucrative contracts, particularly uh, on government fleets contracts. Today we are announcing the establishment of an, an auto sector uh, aftermarket program that will benefit 300 panel beaters and mechanics in our province. The program will be rolled out by the AITC Eastern Cape and it will focus on the training capacity building and aftermarket funding over the next three years. Our vision with this program is to capacitate panel beaters and mechanics to access the 40 billion annual spend by the insurance industry and the 100 million spent by government fleet. So, Leo is a guni, Apo is Lukshini, Nalapo is Lalini, Bandbaguti, Abo, Banesa Kono, so quasi Ugulungisa, Imot. Say, Bule like Indogoba El Tubalinje, Nili Sebenzis. Honorable Speaker, despite the odds we faced on the economic front, our two uh, operational, special economic zones uh, continue to be our beacon of hope. Uh, and our centers of excellence. In the last uh, few months, the East London IDZ has attracted 535 million investment, while the Kucha SZ 
has received corresponding investment value pledges of 557.7 million. Manufacturers in the East London IDZ created an additional 1,200 jobs uh, last year. The development of the infrastructure and at the Wild Coast Industrial Park in Mtata is progressing very well. I hope that the uh, mayor was a KSD ulab, no mayor was a Oaratambo balapa because that needs support. It must be their baby. Uh, it must be babysitted by them, working with us to ensure that that initiative doesn't fail uh, for us to be able to facilitate the economic development in the eastern part uh, of our province. Our work. Uh, on revitalizing industrial parks is uh, continuing over and above what we will be doing there. We are working on Fort Jackson, Vulindlela, and Komani, as well as Somerset, and, and uh, those ones have already secured some investors that are currently operating in those industrial parks. In, Dizam, in, D, in Dimbaza, we have completed roads and bulk services, and the electrical network has been upgraded. We have further injected 35.2 million to upgrade the water waste treatment plant there in Timbaza. When we said we are going to open factories there, we meant it. Yes, of course, we are creating a conducive environment for factories to open. You, Sotolup, uh, your worship, Pagati, make sure that uh, you have sleepless nights going all out in ensuring that we get investors to go there, start open it, opening up factories to operate. Similarly, we are also investing 14.5 million to refurbish 10 sites in Fort Jackson Industrial Park and 10.8 million for similar work at the Butterworth Industrial Park. Madam Speaker, the, relief, the retail sector has been a formidable partner in bringing retail services closer to the people. Not only that, but the sector is also creating large scale employment in our province. Last year, we opened the doors to 500 million new boardwalk mall in Kabeha. The development created more than 1,300 jobs during construction and over 1,000 permanent jobs um, post-construction. The cherry on top is that 80% of work that was done on site was completed by the local subcontractors using local labor. It's important, I see the MEC's minister is here for small business. I think it's very much interested on how are we getting at a point that we support these small businesses, these small contractors, emerging contractors, to participate meaningfully in the opportunities like these. The future looks even more brighter for the retail sector in our province. The reason we say that is because the ShopRite Group is investing $1.5 in a distribution center at Kabeha. That has created 955 jobs, and Sanaha Property Development has pledged 542 million to build the boxer stores in our province. Buyers or mayor, did they want them to available? We don't want a single investor that comes here gets frustrated because you cannot avail land immediately when an investor is here to actually invest in our areas. All investors will be housed by the municipalities in your towns. You must move with speed we have actually done. Actually get the momentum we have created from national as well as uh, from the provincial space. Our vision is to partner with big retail companies to build distribution centers across our districts in the province, prioritizing especially small towns. I am making a special appeal to the traditional leaders and local municipalities to avail land to private investors for economic development for the benefit of our people. We are having an ongoing conversation with the retail sector to scale up source, sourcing of goods such as vegetables from the local farmers. To make this possible, the government is assisting local farmers to massify production to meet the demands of the retail sector in terms of quantity and quality. Honorable members, agriculture is a sector where we have a comparative advantage as a province. We have said it before, this is where the livestock uh, is found. We want to increase the contribution of the sector to the uh, GDP and create employment opportunities for our people. 
Our programs to support farmers continued in 2022, as our programs will continue in 2023 and move on to other outer years of our medium term expenditure framework. We completed 91 infrastructure projects that benefited 1,549 smaller holder farmers and created 921 jobs. In the new financial year, we are scaling up this program by investing 139 million to uh, implement 184 infrastructure projects that will benefit 3,132 uh, 3, small uh, holder farmers in our province. We are investing uh, significant uh, resources in high value chain commodities such as grain, citrus, vegetables, and meat. Last year, we planted 21,000 hectares, uh, benefiting a total of 8,900 smallholders and 15,200 subsistence producers. This year, we are scaling up the program by investing 102 million to plant 27,000 hectares. We are further investing 50 million to support commercial scale production in fruits, grains, livestock, vegetables, piggery, and poultry commodities. Our province is the second largest producer of citrus in the entire country. We are following Limpompo. Citrus growers in our province uh, were adversely affected by the price hikes on a number of inputs due to the COVID-19 pandemic and the war in Ukraine. We are putting measures in place to avert any possible liquidation of this uh, business as that will threaten industry transformation and lead to job losses. The National Department of Agriculture, Land Reform and Rural Development has already granted approval to redirect funds from other projects to implement the bailout intervention and in the pro uh, intervention and particularly in our province. And we are finalizing implementation processes of this much needed intervention. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, you all know that the struggles uh, we had with the Magwati estate that threatened the very existence of that important employer of the people in Lusikisigi. The good news uh, we are bringing uh, today to you is that the estate is on a path of self-sustenance. Our intervention at Magwati sus sustained 1,558 1, jobs in the impoverished communities of Ingoza Hill and surroundings. We have started with the diversification and commercialization of products in Magwa, Majola, as promised in 2022 State of the Province Address. We included Magwa and Majola tea products in the Eastern Cape government transversal contracts. This is a breakthrough in the public sector market and will be able to improve the company's revenue uh, uh, to actually uh, generate a uh, revenues generation model. Magwati has expanded its market footprint to the, to the hotel and hospitality industry, such as Premier Hotel, Bupege Premier Hotel Nguk, who's our figure, Upunga Iti as a Magwa. The Premier Hotel Geile, the owner of ICC, Apanez New Hotel. We are engaging your Southern Sun and all other big uh, um, industries in the sector to make sure that uh, we are together. And so, I think as offices government, zonge ingedle, the figures tibane neti yase magwa, ubo nba wenzanjan. Uba isli. And it's like, toba ngenkan. So we really appreciate the response from the industry on this one. Damona, umeya, was a sajonis unoba uti inga di ziyanga se ema ena ema guaga kulo ani bonu peping up kora na se major kama uelela sbeti major la sbeti ema gua as well. Ever since I was uh, introduced to the Maguati product, I have not drank another tea brand. Let us all buy local produced products. Yes.
and all Roy Posey Betty Valley too. Kupa Yongi, Kuping Miliki, the Kupi stress, Ube right. Magua has entered into a partnership agreement with Sapi to sell timber and revitalize forestry plantation within the estate. It's part of the diversification that we're doing in that. This is another significant investment which presents an opportunity to accelerate the development of forestry plantation. Magwati is indeed a good story to tell. Aquaculture is an agricultural sector we are focusing on to exploit the vast oceans and estuaries uh, and rivers that are abundant with the marine life in our province. This sector is still in its infancy in the country with an estimated production less than 10,000 tons per year, while Egypt, which leads the rest of the continent, boasts of nearly 1.6 million tons of production per year. Yeah, born again, born in Egypt, and the Bobi and the Yambi Vachol, the Yambi is serious. We are engaging our partners in Egypt, both from a technical and funding modality point of view. The target of this investment is in Mbashe. You know the tilapia that we've been speaking about. We can't lose that one. The Amaz Botolo Konapa. We'll never drop that one. It's a catalytic project we have spoken about. It continues. So that project is important. We are also working on Kuha initiatives as well as East London uh, IDZ. In the state of the province address of 2022, we committed to contribute inputs that would streamline regulatory processes to enable the development of the cannabis and hemp sector. We did that, uh, that there are 91 hemp cultivation licenses that the Department of Agriculture, Land Affairs, Land, uh, Land Reform and Rural Development uh, has issued to our people, only small holder farmers in the Eastern Cape. So, Lamtimbwe hemp, Ubaliki, Ukala Pakuye, Uye Udate Lenzulwini, Uguya Lamtimbi, we cannabis. It's part of that. A industry that we are working on. That is the highest number of permits issued in the country. This shows that the people really want to get involved in the cannabis and hemp cultivation. Sifuna Lam Teto, Speaker, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Honorable Chief Whip from the National Assembly, Lam Teto, Pagati Pago Health, no, not rural development or agriculture, or Kaulezis, Paya Gang, like Esnayo, Abandu be to means who have been involved in this industry when the cycle ran by Begang Api. Go Gubane criminal records. So we are looking at possibilities, appealing to government, us working with national to look at possibilities of amnesty so that those SMMEs can be allowed to go back and start actively participating <laughs> in a very legalized environment. So it's important that uh, we don't leave them behind. Uh, it was not their choice. Uh, actually, they were very much advanced than all of us, knowing that this is a very big industry, the cannabis industry. For medicinal use, uh, this cannabis. Fellow <laughs> citizen of the Eastern Cape, uh, this year marks the 110 years of the enactment of the abhorrent and notorious Land Act of 1913. So, the Land Act of it is for this reason that we remain committed to the program of land reform. In this current financial year, government redistributed 4,834 hectares of land to beneficiaries. The Sandlana, Esarapatman, Usisipo, Martinis, Joe Gabi, Venetia, 
Yanse Sarabatman, Nabanya Abanis, Abate, Ebaguaz, Ukamla, Kule Mego Kahulmende, Yelente, Restitution and Land Redistribution. They are receiving government support, what is important, to be successful farmers. Yolendo Kasita Bandi says the Bang Olom Shaba, Mabang and Zija Bang Olom Shaba, Mabenzi Bang Olom Shaba, Ngenjongos, Oku Pushisa, Be Pushisela Esizuana, Nabanduana Baba Baseza. Unga di masini ugu imali, kwa imali kululu ifuman, imali ini, kwa bani nza bani kwa imali, ya pelela imali, is to be. So si afuna ke ugu nsegi sindo kwa kwa, kale nsebe nzi swano, si peka pambi. Isebe, el sebe liga mama, eh, utoko titisa, lisi tala ili ndoba kuiluzwe longe, lisa ukasha ama kosa ezo limo, ay 10,000. Kulo 10,000, i 1,500 ya loma kosa, iza ukeshwa in our province. So we really appreciate that intervention because... That's how Siza Ukwazu kuputula infuyo nemveliso ya bandu baguti bagwaza bandu baguti ugulungela intengi iso no shishi no paya kwe agriculture as a sector. The graduates who have a qualification in agriculture must grab this opportunity with both hands. The work of establishing a vet school at University of Forte is progressing. We hope a declaration will be made before the end of this term, that is before the end of next year, by the Minister of Higher Education, Science and Innovation. We are rolling out an elaborate food security program that will ensure that our people work the land, feed themselves and expand into commercial opportunities where their scale of production allows. We are going to invest 45 million to support 22,000 620 vulnerable households targeting women, youth, people with disability, and military vets towards the food security program. Fellow citizens, we have a gem in this province that is unmatched from tourism point of view. Please take time to visit the tourism sites of our province on weekends and during holidays. Tabe pumul unga ambu yego ni province ushia ezi zindo zizi gems ezi nazo apa oza ozi fuman bado na bago ba funde le province ba ibone kaka utle ukoba le province indeed iseno kuwa zindo ukoba ibe yinda wa ezi kuwa zuba nega some actually greener pastures it gives me a great pleasure to inform you that from January to December 2022 5.7 million domestic tourists visited our province. This was 700,000 more compared to the previous year. Tourist contribution or tourism contributed 8.6 billion to the provincial economy. There is no doubt that the smart marketing approach we implemented is successfully is successful and must be sustained uh, so that we continue with this kind of good work we are doing. We will continue to roll out infrastructure to improve access to tourist destination and parks in our province. Through the Eastern Cape uh, Stimulus Fund, we invested 7.5 million to build four additional chalet and uh, viewing deck at Hlulega Nature Reserve in the tranquil stretch of our Tambo district. Hlulega is a sojourner, so do you. It's a KSD. It's a Nyandi. Ninga Lungai, Nobindaun, Ilape Eastern Cape. To facilitate access to our tourism destination, we continue to prioritize the improvement of roads such as the road to Tulega. Sesim Kibile first phase by Tulega, with 20 kilometers surfaced. We are getting into that road down to the actual nature reserve so that our tourists can have an easy access into that part of our province. And also, we are working hard on the newly gazetted uh, road uh, that we are working on, which will be moving from Vichysville to Coffee Bay. See, I have one person Coffee Bay, and I'm going to go to the house, 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 and I'm going we are engaging airports company uh, South Africa to help us make it easy for international tourists to fly directly into our province. The problem of limited international and domestic 
uh, flights into the province is not only about tourism, but also about reducing the cost of doing business in our province. Honorable members, one of the improve, one of the growing economic sectors in the province is the film industry. In these past four years, government invested 23 million in a localization incentive scheme. The return on our investment was 389 million, which resulted to over 6,900 jobs and benefiting 572 SMMEs during production phases of these projects. Our provincial our province has attracted international and local production. Thousands of South, African, South Africans watch our groundbreaking TV series, Kaibeha, The Empire. The Ayaz Bagutwage, a film, if I don't know why, with my choice, Kogia Ikasali Amba. God, why in being the Babandu Basa Eastern Cape, but the Femene opportunity, you will need content into the national screens. Ibenga Abo Gala. I understand you know, the value chain and the economy of such opportunity. We want our people to support initiatives of this nature. Abandwana, Kausia Paya, Babona Umzegal Umsegakulu, Yikari on their own. Last week, I met the crew on set and they were enthusiastic about intervention in the film industry, which is an excellent catalyst for youth employment in the province. And here, and if you get to Labandana Bangling, Babu Gale Paya, we are charters, forget who come chart or pa, a woman yan, who abandon Abangling by Obugela. You can tell all these big stars when they are here in front of them. It's unbelievable. Paya, the entire street is so occupied by the business. Abandu by Negesenga Zintuzabo, Abandu Gaya Sejenzo. So, this is an opportunity that is brought about by this. Flowing, I play in Dungayas, Ukalu, we understand. Self-hate as people of Eastern Cape. No busa khauti, no busa kapa. Umandelo, yeke into a self-hate. We want to take this province from where it is to a level where it is supposed to be. So that abantu wana betu, banga bina ole ngagi yoko bababe ipati yale migrant labor system that we have suffered uh, guyo. Madam Speaker, research at uh, attests that thriving SMME sector is key for job creation and economic growth. Initiatives uh, supporting SMME access to finance and markets as well as intervention that leverage the public sector spent uh, for uh, support SMME remain a priority for the province. We all work with Minister Apa, Ustela, and Abene Abrams. We finish by province, or mayor, or maspala. They don't seem to be really, really grappling well with this LED concept. And all our municipalities are developmental local municipalities. We've got to understand that it starts there and push it and lead it. It must be championed by mayors. It must be championed by MECs. Amalunga Parliament, all of us here collectively to make sure that we really unlock the potential in the SMME sector in our province. In this regard, the Department of Economic Development and Environmental Affairs and Tourism, working with the Eastern Cape Development Corporation, are upscaling the implementation of SMME support. We are working with other partners in the development finance to upscale support for SMME. The CEDA Technology Program through its incubation unit, supports 14 incubators in the Eastern Cape to the value of 29.8 um, million. Honorable members, we, are, we all agree that we need to scale up on our youth development inter interventions. The number of uh, young people who are not in the education, employment, or training in the province is at alarming levels, requiring a targeted, decisive intervention. Nivile in the Gogba, Abandona Bay to Abangena, grade one. See, net percentage high as compared to other provinces when it comes to the end of the road, grade 12. So, see, Abaluza, MEC Gad, Abandona Bay to Abendele. So we've got to look at that and begin to look at broadly on the issue of the skills uh, development. 
targeting also that uh, cohort of our young people. This means we must scale up skills development initiative targeting this group of young people, as I've said, and channel their energy in the right direction. Not all young people aspire to be entrepreneurs. We are collaborating with various sector education training authorities, private sector, national youth development agents, and other role players who implement various education and skills development programs for our young people. These include bursaries that we're giving to our young kids in universities and TVETs, internships that we're giving to our people for the experiential learning and learnership and other experiential learning opportunities that our, our young people are also benefiting from our government. We talk thousands and thousands of young people that are absorbed by these interventions. We remain committed to ensure that youth-owned business, businesses continue to benefit from preferential procurement policy of our government. All state institutions must speed up the implementation of youth responsive planning and budgeting framework so that we can improve from the current baseline of 8% to the 30% target stipulated in the national youth, uh, uh, national youth policy by the end of this term. As of December 2022, 203 million rands was spent on 3,900 youth-owned Eastern Cape-based businesses. We are calling on young people to grab this opportunity with both hands and ensure that they invest in their own businesses for sustainable growth. In this thing as we answer, who did that the sweet projects government? Who be a to bafuna with 30 percent with local content? Abang and underwent a net business interest. Whether it's 30 percent or 1 percent, we want to create jobs. We want those to be made available to real business people, real SMMEs, real entrepreneurs, not people who want money and start moving around using this money for all the other ulterior motives. A few years ago, we set up a fund dedicated for young people and called it Isikalo Fund. We wanted to assist young people to take the first step into the world of commerce. Honorable MEC Mvoko, we have got thousands and thousands of applications, proposals for, from young people on ISICAL. It shows that young people are not just looking for employment opportunities. They want to be part of this value chain to create jobs. So as a scale, see sevens. We wanted to assist young people, young entrepreneurs, to take up this opportunity and make sure that they step into the world of commerce. There is now more demand for Iskalo seed funding from young entrepreneurs in our province. Iskalo must be alone. But if we give, can do the same thing. We are a country that we fund now. We go to the same time. We go to the same time. We can say that we have developed all the big businesses in the world started from that embryo, embryonic thinking build on that, give young people an opportunity to go out in the world and express themselves. Today we announce an increase to the Isikalo Youth Fund. It is now 100 million over three years. Soon, the are 100 million over a year. But we're starting with this to make sure that we expand on what we've been doing in the last uh, uh, a few years. We are confident that this investment in the young people of our province will give us a better returns uh, in terms of job creation, Isikalo a Youth Fund is a story of good progress. <laughs> Many young people in our province carry the heavy load of student debt. This affects their aspirations to improve their lives and the lives of their families. We must remember that when families send their children to school, they want them to have a better life. It's only education that is going to help us to address the inequality, to address the underdevelopment, to address high levels of uh, poverty that we have in our province. So it's important to get those young people to school. Last year, we uh, intervened to provide student debt uh, relief amounting to 50 million for students in our uh, four local universities. The thing I last year, we've been continuing over the last uh, two uh, or so years. 
to assist in actually mitigating problems of fees must fall, etc. That's why it has been less in our province. It has been out of intervention made by provincial government to assist our kids. Those who cannot finish their degrees because they are owing, they cannot be allowed to register. Those uh, who still want to come into the system, uh, they couldn't get NSFAS for a number of reasons. So we are creating this opportunity for our kids to make sure that they are able uh, to get this. So that 50 million that we committed last year, we are continuing with it again in this financial year to make sure that Abandu and Abad, Abangana Temba, Boxiteta, Abangas of Mana certificate, Naklona Unyaka, Sizaukazi, Ukubanika, and Loma Sizainika as University Zalapa, Zoi 4. Because sitting on Umdana Asoko Umsebenzi, Enesitanga Sake, Esandli, and I went about Umdana, Abe frustrated, Kubinga was a baby degree, Kubinga was a Badala University, Ne universities, Nemi Teto Elushi, Kangamanya Makaisa, as Nadas Nantli Zio, Siafuni University, as Nogo, Zinga Bizi Ivory Towers, the Pile, we society to and understand how best we must come closer and assist our people. But as a country, and, and it as a SRC president. I was once an SRC president. I'm becoming passionate when I speak about how to assist young people in universities, the importance of education in universities. But as a country, we must seek permanent solution to the issue uh, of fees in the higher education. I have observed that even the middle class does not afford to pay fees in higher education. Oh, Tishara, I'm a police. So it means test iba kupa out ku NSFAS banga bina yinja la yogne dagal. See ben an impression yung gati they can afford. So we must actually relook at this, actually review how we are really assisting at these actually young people out there almost on an ongoing basis uh, to support uh, our kids. Honorable Speaker, our efforts to bring in Bona Masan Karaze. I'm sure because it's 12 o'clock. Our, our Honorable Speaker, our efforts to bring more young people into the labor market have been aided by the implementation of the Presidential Youth Employment Initiative. Since its inception, thousands of young people have not just benefited from the program, but have also added value in areas where they are placed, especially in our schools. Again, we want our youth to see this initiative as both an intervention to reduce unemployment levels in our province, but also to equip themselves with skills and experience for entry into the formal job market. Honorable members, as the sixth administration, we are equal committed to scaling up our intervention of ensuring that full participation of women in our provincial economy uh, is actually realized. To this end, as government, we need to uh, lead by example uh, if we want to see the private sector coming on board and non-governmental sectors uh, to follow suit in embracing the mainstreaming of women in the economy as well uh, in the society. As such, we will continue with our efforts of going beyond meeting our uh, equity targets as it relates to the recruitment of women in senior manage management positions. I would like to commend a six, uh, uh, to commend uh, six government departments that have met the minimum uh, gender equity targets at the senior management service, which is an improvement from the three that we reported in 2021. We are rolling out development programs to middle management level, and this gives us confidence that by the end of the term, all government departments would have reached their targets. Although 7,298 women owned uh, Eastern Cape-based business benefited from the provincial government procurement spent to, uh, to the value of uh, 413 million in the current financial year, we have uh, directed provincial departments to increase this number and ensure that at least 40% is spent on women-owned Eastern Cape-based companies. Honorable Speaker and Honorable Members, our infrastructure delivery program is a strategic initiative to diversify investment across the province. We are relentless 
uh, uh, in pursuing six mega infrastructure projects, which are end to highway, um, as you all know, Mzimvobo water project, uh, Eastern Cape uh, uh, Transnet initiatives, end to nodal development, under sea cable, and the wild coast SZ. Uh, we talk about more on that. Uh, we are expanding. We are now bringing back the uh, uh, shell gas, the exploration of that. Ministers gazetted that, and we believe that these are opportunities that we once spoke about. Now they are back uh, into the equation. So there are such a number of initiatives. Your gas to power or your LNG project, it is now gaining momentum uh, down that side. I had a meeting with the Koha team as well as the minister and his team uh, on the eve of State of the Nation address to address some of these bottlenecks to ensure that we move with speed and agility to actually attend to these sort of initiatives for our province. One of the most uh, critical infrastructure um, in any economy is the road network as it facilitates movement of people and goods. We want to play big on logistics. We can really be another uh, hub if we look at the issues of logistics. The work of uh, transforming the Wild Coast Corridor through the construction of the End to Wild Coast project is gaining momentum. For the people who do not know the area I'm talking about, the project is implemented to benefit two of the poorest districts in our country, Owar Tambo and Alfred Nzo. I can tell you, with implementation of that project and completion, the socio-economic outlook of that particular part of our country, as well as the province, will actually completely change. Late last year, a contractor was actually uh, given a, a site to start establishing on Mtendu Bridge. You know the story of Mtendu Bridge. That work is underway with all other road uh, networks that are happening around uh, that particular project. So we are moving there uh, with speed uh, to ensure that the construction uh, continues as it is expected to start by March uh, this year. This is a four billion investment by our government to re re redefine the economic development landscape for the entire Pondoland region using roads as an enabler to, for sustainable economic development. Uh, this is a story of good progress after delays on this project. We are moving with greater speed, working with Sandra to construct number of road arteries that are connecting into that space. I won't mention those roads. I'm just moving with speed. You will see yourselves, but contracts have been awarded to make sure that that area is changing completely. We're working on the green fields and bridges, as we have indicated. Plans are at an advanced stage for the rehabilitation of Ingozahil Memorial Roads, upgrading of roads within and Tlavogazi village, Lambasi, and R61, Tubambisan, and all range of roads that we are working on with Sandra to actually develop uh, that area indeed uh, to become a tourist and economic um, uh, epicenter uh, for opportunities of our people. We are also going to attend uh, to the roads uh, from Dwalane to Ntafu, Funtafu, Fubambisana, Jalonja. Uh, then we are moving forward with those roads. They are in your speech. I might not necessarily deal with them, all of them. The end to wild coast uh, development is a foundation for our province to also benefit from the eastern seaport development, which connects the eastern Cape and Wazul Nata. As over the last 29 years, the development has been over concentrated on our urban areas. Buffalo City, as well as Goha, because of SZ that we have. We are trying to expand that look east, where also many people, the majority of our people reside, to make sure that these opportunities and interventions are reaching out to them and really change their lives where they are. They don't have to come to East London or come to Kabeha for them to see better things in their lives. While I'm on this point, I'm pleased to announce that the blueprint uh, to guide our work in the Eastern Seaboard development has been gazetted. I encourage fellow citizens to submit comments in that exercise. Honorable Speaker and all of the members who are also constructing uh, projects, uh, road projects worth over four billion in other districts across the province. MEC will come with that detail during his policy speech. So all those roads, you can think about them, we've been talking about. When we started for 2019, all of those, we are leaving no stone unturned to make sure that both us, provincial and national, we work with our local government to deliver on those. Yeah.
I must say to the people of our province, we want to fix all roads um, uh, they tell us about. We know those roads, we know where those are damaged, etc. We are working on that, but the reality is that we cannot do all of them at the same time because about 90% of our roads here are, are gravel roads, only 10% that are surface roads. But we are going to be working with all the engineer, engineers relevant to see to it how do we work on the sustainability of roads that we're doing. Because even the paving we're doing, looking at all what has been having floods, they flood everything. In Angela, we couldn't kill. Go be selling in the way. We can't be paving, etc. That's, uh, that's far, 5,600 people are employed in the current road uh, construction. So, that's the sense I, I, I infrastructure programs. We are creating jobs for our people. It's not just about uh, the end use of that uh, product, but the goals is seven. I'm at two seven. I want to I have Rural roads uh, pose an everyday uh, challenge of access uh, to our communities. The solution to this challenge is a proper construction and maintenance of rural roads. And what is the solution to this challenge? In rural areas, for people to go to town, get services, they must have proper roads, have ESO bridges that we've been talking about. We are in the process of buying 36 new items of yellow fleet, planned machinery, which we will use to strengthen our efforts on roads. Sibuisa on ondeente. Chamber si tengez yellow fleet, si funa lende maintenance yende, si enza no maspala, aba non tende bebe selipa, si a si ayaz gende bebe zenz ez nizi, manga zenz ez baba sma funa, kuye gon zwinde, si pke tewe znizi. We'll prioritize districts that are prone to disasters. This program will open further opportunities for youth employment. As the disasters si te dang azo, i bridge ngo gezi mkayo zi low lying bridges. That's the reason why we are not going to fix those low lying like bridge. Because here when the bridge, Masi leave the la bridge. Ibe ile bridge e fanele kleyo for landle. So we are working with national to make sure that we get necessary support, as minister has indicated uh, in his budget speech, that they are putting more effort and resources to support on this. We are doing technical assessment so that all those bridges, we not just fix them for the sake of fixing them, but we fix them for the permanent solution for whatever that comes later. We are consolidating damage caused by the floods uh, on our roads and bridges with aim uh, uh, of sourcing more funding from the national government, as I've indicated. So we're working together on this one. Our rail and uh, port infrastructure is also receiving attention. Transnet Freight Rail is planning to open the line from Kronstadt to the port of East London. At the port of, uh, port of Elizabeth, 1,200 ton slipway project is to be completed by March. The grain elevator at the port of East London is operational. The imports and exports of maize have started with two vessels handled. This is the experience that our people have been longing for in our province. And make sure that this province participates meaningfully in the economic development space. Honorable members, our national and provincial de 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 development plans identify the provision of water supply for domestic and commercial use as critical for economic development. In previous years, we made a commitment that the Mzivu Water Project will be implemented during the sixth administration. I'm pleased to announce that our, out of our relentless pursuit of this catalytic project, uh, this has actually been actually realized. Uh, government has committed uh, money to make sure that this project starts. In Lela, as the Apaya Elalin, as a first phase, the Agrijazel, we have been told that more than 8 billion for first phase is going to be done. The minister said, towards the mid end last this year, the project will be in full swing implementation in that. States SA General um, uh, Household Survey of 2021 indicates that our province is progressing towards achieving universal access to water. Yin Agigeli, Yobasifagele, Ibalak, and Nantondu. Our man, the anger, Pumi, as deep in a big bandwidth. Access to water in our province now stands at 71%. We are scaling up the titulations of, of um, water to our communities through the multi year rent bulk infrastructure grant amounting to 10 billion. Thus far, we have spent 
a cumulative amount of 6.8 billion. Yimale park with the city municipalities from national to make sure that long term we are attend. Park or Kokas Kabezela Park, the last phase park, we project 577 million. Aban Basset Koka, Bagwas of Madamanzi, Angazuazi, Ugu Kawanda, Kodwa, Sifuning or Kongoku, Ekawles Leo, Ezauti, Long term we are in that in the sushi a power park with district municipalities. Kodwa, si jonge lomkwe mwere dikulation upege kwa maspala. Because esara patman apo sinalo arrangement. Asina azazi ngagezi ngaga za manzi anga kwa zuku puma na manzi akawka. Lomkwe mwere wa manzi himpiru. It's one of non-negotiables. Esi zbegile yo kwa maspala ndo kwa uba uzu kwa zuku pa manzi tepi. Kutene nifine kube ngume. Kutene nifine kube ngume MM. Why must we have that municipality? Because that's a basic service that must get to our people. Honorable members, if I were to choose where the heavy rains um, where our experience uh, we are experiencing must go, I would say Nelson Mandela Metro. I guess now you Nelson Mandela, yet drought that has been prolonging uh, for a longer period in that part. We are working in that space uh, to ensure that we attend to that drought issue. We are doing the three things to mitigate the challenge. Uh, we have mobilized the community to use water sparingly. Uh, to avoid day zero. Water usage in metro is very high at 280 megaliters. It has to be reduced to 230 megaliters. Secondly, we are managing uh, demand by installing pressure reduction devices in areas where high water use is detected. We are also working with private sector to repair water leaks in that area. I must commend the Nelson Mandela Metro Business Chamber for the leading role they are playing on this program. The third action we are taking is uh, sourcing additional water from uh, boreholes, groundwater development, uh, as well as exploring desalination. The good news I'm bringing to the people of Nelson Mandela Metro is that the Department of Water Affairs will commence with the construction of Kone Balancing Dam in September to ensure uh, more water storage capacity. In the short term, water tankers will continue to assist in providing water to the communities. Challenges of access to water requires us to have innovative solutions. We implemented seven um, spring water projects in our municipalities. Emalasheni, AP Kuman, Zigayet, La Amans, Emi Tom, Swakonet Emi Tonjin, Akakim, Akotekil, Asempilwe. Kenisa Lord, we are going to be expanding that project to make sure that this work that we've done, we've seen benefiting jobs as well as uh, economic development in those areas, it's continuing without fail. We are going to expand this initiative uh, to other communities as water never stops. Coming out of taps uh, from the spring waters, as I've indicated, this is a story of good progress we have seen out of rural development. When we talk rural development, we talk about initiatives of this nature that are implemented by various role players. Rural development is a cross-cutting function which requires strategic partnership. Yeo Lendo, that we've removed it now to be in the office of the Premier. Yes, continue. We, also, we have also made big mistakes on the eradication of sanitation backlogs from the 62% to 30%. We are working with the national government to reach unserved communities, especially in the homelands. This thing, your man's e pain to our people. We've got to spend a considerable time, make sure that all of us as we're seated here as leaders, we go and address this issue. The N2 nodal development, which is a strategic economic uh, and housing uh, provision intervention program in Kabeha is progressing. There is a need for a greater speed. Uh, I've spoken to the mayor of uh, Nelson Mandela around this Bay West. I've spoken to the mayor of Buffalo City to make sure that we provide the bulk infrastructure and move with speed. Honorable members, the two Africa cable has landed in Kabeha and will be ready for service, uh, to, uh, for service by December 2023. The landing of this sea cable, which among, amongst other things, uh, uh, will improve connectivity in the municipalities across the province. The issue of connectivity is not a luxury. It is a security matter in the environment where crime is rife. The, provi the provincial broadband project continues to be rolled out to connect government sites, which includes schools, hospitals, and offices. 
It is through our investment on ICT infrastructure that we are now able to digitize uh, operations in government. We have now e-health, e-education platforms that have led to improve efficiencies. In the past, uh, people who wanted to apply for government post had to buy envelopes and post applications. But now our people uh, have an access to this, our new e-recruitment platforms, which makes it possible for people to send their application in the comfort of their homes. This is a story of good progress. To date, we have a connected 982 sites through the broadband initiative. Vodacom is expanding broadband coverage in rural communities. They have spent uh, villages. They have now investing 71 million to connect 86 more villages by June. MTN is also doing work there. They've invested 600 million just in the Eastern Cape region to protect network. In Nagia to Upper Yivanism. People are stealing those lithium batteries in those towers that you see. They are destroying the infrastructure. Our people don't have network. We must declare war on vandalism, declare war on all these funny things that our people are doing. A, a former leader, as a former leader of students, I always take keen interest on the welfare of students. We've spoken about that, uh, but it's important to indicate the work that we're doing from the higher education sector. The Department of Higher Education invested $2.8 billion to upgrade infrastructure in 16 TVET colleges across the country. Upgrades at Kraft Reinet, Alwal North, and Ngoshe TVET colleges have been completed with Ikala College campus in Stakesbridge is under construction. This is a story of good progress. Government allocated $350 million to Walter Sesuri University for renovation labs uh, that are actually uh, being done in that part, particularly in Mtata campus. Also working on residences as well as improving the ICT with the support uh, of government. The Nelson Mandela University invested $623 million for infrastructure projects. The implementation of projects include the 1,800-bed residence development, a new science center and renewable energy projects to install PV panels. That's the work that is being done in Nelson Mandela University. Rhodes University is also implementing exciting infrastructure projects worth $308 million. Uh, in All this work is done by the ANC led government as a direct response to what we said we will be going to do to our people. ANC government understands exactly where we want to take this country from. We know where we took this country from. We want where to take this country to. We know where we are. And challenges that we are grappling with, we are bringing solutions because ANC cares. ANC understands the feeling and the actual challenges of our people. In 2019, we committed that the bishop precinct will take off. That project is actually under our microscopic view. It is going to be done. We are not going to leave this term without bishop, bishop precinct being going up there. It's going to be built to make sure that all government employees have got access to better office spaces. Mr. Speaker, sustaining, uh, sustainable energy supply is vital for economic development, but also our people uh, use electricity daily uh, for their lives. So, the challenge of electricity in our country is regrettable. It is an inconvenience of all of us and is disruptive of business. Even now, COVID-19. I know challenges that are being experienced by our small businesses, etc., etc. But while bringing some solutions into this, we have listened to the presidents articulating how we are intervening into that space, but also what Minister has said in the budget speech, giving op options, all people are now allowed to really generate this um, energy on their own up to the 100 uh, units, and what, what do you mean, 100 uh, 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 kilowatts. 100 kilowatts, so that uh, we are able to assist. Ute watiki ngoku minister, una yoke ngunwe incentive. Kwa uenzili, useno kwa zubu yegez wanange 15,000. Because we want to take household and all other people off the grid. To allow the grid to have more capacity for uh, the reindustrialization of our country. As a province, we are putting in place 
short-term, uh, mid to medium, long-term intervention to manage load shedding, while acknowledging the steps taken by the Buffalo City. Thank you very much to lead into that Buffalo City we have seen, where we are doing Nelson Mandela and the business chambers and stakeholders in managing the impact of that. If Buffalo City is almost steps ahead, uh, what is being announced national, they've already moved into that. Residents of Buffalo City would know it better. <laughs> These steps are progressing are progressive in ensuring the balance between the business and the job sustainability. We are, uh, encouraged citizen, we are encouraging citizens uh, to install a rooftop solar system. I've done that. Let me move. Uh, to, uh, <coughs> the bulk uh, of these projects that we are referring to are in the renewable energy sector and are target, targeted for establishment uh, in Dabozuko. Here in Dabozuko, very soon. That is work is being facilitated by East London IDZ. This is also an, oppo an opportune time for the country to be de decisive on building the nuclear plant in Danesbend. We must agree on this one, Honorable Stevenson. We don't have an option. Uh, the country must be able to generate this province, must be able to generate and assist in improving capacity uh, into the national grid. Madam Speaker, our country is endowed in oil and gas. Two years ago, we informed this house about the intention to position Koha and the Eastern Cape province as a gas hub, leveraging uh, the discovery of natural gas in the area. And now state. Today, we, are, we report that the vast environmental authorization, which include the Mosul Bay and Koha, have been gazetted and are paved the way to, bulk, to build a 400-kilometer gas pipeline from the Mosul Bay to a 1,000 megawatts gas power station in Koha. <laughs> Last year, we also made an undertaking that the multi-billion hive energy project in the green hydrogen sector will be one of our mega catalytic projects. Today, Honorable Speaker, I'm pleased to report that the Green Ammonium Plant Project, valued at 100 billion, is officially gazetted. We also welcome the announcement by the Department of Mineral Resources and Energy that legal exploration of South Africa shale gas endowments can go ahead to establish its commercial uh, viability. We support that exploration of the shale gas as a province. We have this message uh, we hope that this message will resonate well with all our investors and they will see that we are, de we are developing a long term to supply them with energy. Honorable Speaker, let me now turn to the work we are doing in the social needs cluster. There's a better way to start 2023 than uh, achievement of the, there is no better way than the achievement we have seen in the grade 12. Don't want to say much about that, I've said it before, 77.3%. Uh, is not just a fluke. It is a direct response to the plan we have put in place as this province. And we said in 2019 when we started, by 2024, when we exit this stage, we will be at 80 percent as this province. We are going there and we will be there, I can tell you. I invite all members uh, of House to join me in congratulating Landingwe Kanyisile, the top achiever from Nyanga Senior Secondary School, in the historical disadvantage category, and the overall provincial achiever, Klesin Kain, uh, from the Gray High School, um, uh, Gray Boy High. Bala papaka tukwe tu abo banduan. Sinene na banya banduan, abanduan ebe sbanika kwa za top achievers over the last couple of years. Unis labo banduan abango kreh. Those who actually made available, they are all doctors. It tells you that noba unom zalo onga afotiyo otu pegai, Go to school, dedicate yourself as a young person, study, commit yourself. You will get support from government. So those people will definitely change the lives of their family. While the grade 12 pass rate has been uh, widely discussed and praised, we are also pleased to announce that the overall pass rate in the lower grades has been um, consistently above 80% in the last uh, three years. Sisedenza usuge zans, asisuge stubule genje singene now that we are achieving good results inside the classrooms, we are injecting agility to fix infrastructure in our schools. We said it before, we are saying it now. 
is a no no, it's an anathema not to spend on infrastructure grant, not this province. We'll never tolerate that, we'll never accept that. We're doing everything in our power. So far, I know, uh, I've seen the media reports, there is no money that is taken out of Eastern Cape. The money is being recommitted, the money is being rolled out as we speak to make sure that infrastructure of this province goes ahead. We'll support schools to improve reading capabilities to achieve this work. We are launching the Eastern Cape Reading Academy, an uh, online teacher training model uh, targeted. We will continue to promote inclusive education in line with Bonke and Gabe to program. To this end, we have approved the post uh, uh, provisioning norms uh, of therapists and psychologists to provide services in our schools. I will Inclusive education. Honorable Speaker, we have a serious, a serious challenge of learners who are not uh, finishing their schooling. I've spoken about that. Let me proceed from there. That challenge, we are looking at it, we are attending uh, to it to make sure that we are dealing with it. Madam Speaker, our turnaround plan on health is also succeeding. COVID-19 is no longer viewed as a pandemic, and we have moved in the last year to adapt uh, out of daily lives uh, uh, to uh, living with COVID-19 endemic in our communities. Pandemic and endemic. As a result, our healthcare programs targeted at uh, children, women and men are being scaled up. The immunization of children under uh, one year is above 80% due to the catch-up campaigns we launched. The MEC will come back with such details. Over our investment on the child health programs have led to reduction uh, in under five years mortality rate, reduction in death due to diarrhea, pneumonia, and severe acute malnutrition. This is a good uh, progress. Honorable Speaker, we have recorded a significant drop in the rate of deaths in mothers from uh, 140 deaths to uh, uh, 100,000 to 186 deaths. Uh, per hundred thousand for the first time in the Eastern Cape has dropped beneath the 96 per uh, hundred thousand uh, live best national targets. The, we remain cautiously optimistic that the efforts of encouraging women uh, to book before uh, 20 weeks of pregnancy and that's the thing Sikela abandu basema kaya wa ukulelwa amboshu gusa. Sikela lond. Konugu zukul menda kunye dia kunye tise agubonengeka yesindoba uzaobanenga ki onai. So we are working on that to make sure that we support as we've been doing that uh, to our people, train our staff, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. We remain committed to accelerate the rehabilitation service to cerebral palsy patients through the rehabilitation. Uh, centers of excellence, which include Nelson Mandela Academic Hospital, Cecilia Makewane Free Hospital Academic Complex, as well as Doranginza Hospital. To this uh, effect, critical posts have been filled and uh, 4.5 million have been invested in rehabilitating services, including specialized machinery equipment. While this while the recent uh, judgment, uh, whilst the recent judgment on medical legal in the High Court offers us a, rela a relief on unsustainable cash outflows, in terms of lump sum payments, it is also imposing responsibility and obligation to strengthen our public health care system. As if we are in the judgment, Judgment further reaffirms the responsibility that officials must serve diligently and act ethically. Nursing is profession, just like teaching. It's important that CNZ Londo sees the ACRs, this is Negeze. We have resourced the establishment of a second oncology facility in the Nelson Mandela's uh, Central Academy in Bigelen. We are doing that now, just next door, there in Imtata, to make sure that they get those services closer to them. This is a significant step towards equitable access to health care services, and it provides referral catchment for cancer patients.
eastern side of the province. Honorable Speaker, the province has made it a norm that all new government buildings built by this government are uh, disability friendly and are accessible to persons with disability. A program to revamp old buildings which are not accessible to persons with disabilities is underway. We are committed to addressing the backlog in the provision of assistive devices to people with disabilities. This year we provided more than 22,000 devices with an
2023 truly a year of decisive action to advance the interests of our people. We must work together uh, more than ever before uh, or more than ever done before to rewrite the history of our province from a history of hopelessness to a history of prosperity. Can the honourable members, can you please be seated? The guests, can you please be seated? Thank you so much. You can give another round of applause to the honourable Premier. Uh, thank you, honourable Premier. I don't, I don't want to say how long you took. I think we'll have a discussion, especially with the leader of government business after this. <laughs> uh, I had warned the Premier. But uh, be that as it may, uh, you can see that the, the um, gallery and the honorable members has actually well received uh, the State of the Province address. I will now at this point hand over to the Secretary to make a few announcements regarding the lunch uh, arrangements. Over to you, Secretary. Honorable members and guests, lunch has been prepared for all guests. Protocol staff will direct guests in the gallery to various eating points. Can you note the following categories of guests will be accommodated in the members' dining hall, which is on this side at the back. All MPLs, MECs, including permanent delegates, premier's guests, with the exception of HODs, who are to go to the stretch tent, all traditional leaders, members of the judiciary, chaplaincy, ANC guests, uh, SEPS Provincial Commissioner and Child Ambassadors will go to the members' uh, dining hall. All other guests are requested to proceed to the strange lunch, lunch tent, which is also at the back and uh, also at the members' lobby. Staff, work, media will be served lunch in the boardrooms allocated for this purpose and will be guided by the protocol officers. Lastly, I would also want to announce that our shuttles uh, for the park and ride will be parked outside um, in front of the, of, of the chamber to be able to take back guests uh, to go and collect their cars after lunch. Thank you. Thank you, thank you so much, um, as I was going to say, Honorable Secretary, to the, to the Secretary. Um, honorable members and to all our guests that have joined us for the tabling of the State of the Province.